Many of the animals at Lilongwe Wildlife Centre arrive here, orphaned and alone. But some quickly develop special bonds. This pair of young Dika antelope have become fast friends. Esti and Gigi get on like a house on fire. They have since the moment they met. Gigi came to us in the way that a lot of dikers come. Dika mums leave their babies stashed in the bushes where they go off and forage. People often find these babies hiding in the bushes and assume they've been abandoned. So they bring them into the centre. Esti, unfortunately, had a much rougher start. Esti was rescued from some villagers who were kind of passing her around, most likely for the bushmeat trade. We noticed from the beginning that she wasn't walking quite normally. On her front left leg, she kind of seemed very uncertain of it and didn't really want to put any pressure on it. The veterinary team took an X-ray and discovered the bone wasn't broken, but it was infected. And she was put on antibiotics. Unfortunately, over the time she's been here, it has developed and got into a much worse infection. Esty's on pain medication, but the team need to know why her leg isn't improving. So she's going to have another X-ray. Animal care assistant Ella has to separate the two friends. I know you're fine. <laughs> They don't have X-ray facilities at the centre, so they're taking Esty to a clinic on the other side of Lilongwe. The plan for every animal that arrives at the centre is release. That's what we're here for, is to rescue, rehabilitate and release. So that's our ultimate plan for GD and Esty. Obviously, it will depend on Esty's health. We're not going to release an animal that is severely compromised. Although the clinic's only a few kilometres away, Getting there can take a while because Malawi's bustling capital city is home to around a million people. Amanda and fellow vet Charlotte are hoping that by comparing the X-rays, they'll be able to see if the infection has spread. We'd like to see that there is no active infection in the bone anymore, because that's going to determine whether or not uh, she gets to go and be released in the wild or whether or not she has to stay with us. Esty needs to be sedated, but dikas are flighty creatures. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. OK, great. Now you got it? Yep. Beautiful. Don't step in this, you turkey butt. You're fine. OK, good. The LSPCA's veterinary manager, Tino, often lends a hand with wildlife emergencies. Okay. Yeah. After several weeks of care at the center, they were hoping Esty would have improved enough to be released. She's eating, she's in good condition. She's otherwise acting like a normal diker. As long as her infection is under control, she can still live a happy diker life. But when Tino looks at the X-ray, it all becomes clear. Hey, Tina, can okay. I look? Holy crap. It's not good, eh? This is the x-ray that was taken about eight weeks ago now, wasn't it, yeah. Tino? And you can see the signs of infection there, just like areas where the bone looks a bit mottled or moth-eaten. But you can see the vast majority of the bone is fairly uh, normal, whereas when we look today, the whole bone itself looks mottled. Thank you, Tina. No problem. What are we going to do? Esty's leg is not going to recover, and the infection is spreading. Amanda and Charlotte have a tough decision to make. I worry that with that level of infection, it's a matter of time until it gets beyond the bone. Yeah. And it's whether we can keep her comfortable until that time. If Esty were released in this condition, she wouldn't be likely to survive. We can amputate this. Yeah. Because Diker will do fine with three legs. And if we have a safe place for her to go, well, in that case, I think it's something we need to consider. It's not the end of the story. It just means her story is more complicated. Exactly. An amputation is major surgery and preparations need to be made. So for now, Esty will go back to the comfort of her friend, Gidi. The 
LSPCA in the long way normally cares for domestic animals like cats and dogs. But today, young diker antelope Esty is back there being prepared for major surgery. The infection in her leg is spreading, so Amanda and Charlotte have decided the only course of action is to amputate. Amanda is going to monitor the anaesthetic while Charlotte operates. So in a case like this, you're gonna need to keep her under for as long as it takes to finish the job. This isn't an elective procedure. This is something that we need to do. And so you have to manage this the best you can. Dikers don't always react well to anesthetics. Well, Charlotte, here we go. Esty's future is now in Charlotte's hands. Her eight's gone up a bit, but I'm not unhappy with it. Okay. Charlotte is an experienced veterinary surgeon. I don't enjoy that at all. I'm having a very enjoyable time. See, this is why you have these types of partnerships. So, maintaining its temperature at 36.5, that means that we're doing adequate um, heating. I'm adequately heated. Suddenly, Esty's blood pressure drops. Is anything changing up there, Charlotte? Because uh, my once beautiful pulse pressure has now gone nope. into not beautiful. Nothing bleeding, nothing out of the ordinary. And that's the muscle closed, though. Her pulse pressures aren't very good, but then she's also sounding a little bit gurgly, and it's really difficult to tell whether she's getting some fluid in her mouth or whether it's actually in her lungs. So we're stopping the fluids, and we're keeping up with the gas. And what we're hoping is that in just a minute, we can turn all of this off so that we can um, assess her a little bit more. The pressure's on Charlotte to finish as quickly as she can. I'm done. All right, so let's see if we can get her in a different position. Esty should be starting to come round, but there's no response. Yep, all right, not breathing. Still swallowing. We're taking breaths, still very shallow and intermittent, but we're taking breaths. All right. See, there's a deep, not cool breathing. Quite noisy. Does heart rate sound strong or no? Can you hear it? Much stronger, yeah. Finally, Esty's breathing normally. Gosh. Hi. Oh, hello, hello, sweetheart. Good morning. I know, it's a bit strange. says, I had the weirdest dream. <laughs> yeah. Just really happy that she seems to be recovering quite nicely. So still a lot of steps to go um, before we can hopefully get her back out into the wild, but um, pleased with how things have gone today. Back at the centre, Esty's playmate, GD is waiting for her to return. <laughs> Perfect fit. Yeah. Great. Bye, little lady. Don't do anything silly. The team are going to have to keep a close eye on Esty for a few days. It's going to take Esty a little while to get used to walking on three legs. I'm tired. It's not too surprising. She's going to be a little bit unsteady just now, a combination of the anaesthetic. This floor isn't really helping. It's quite slidey, so if we put some more towels down just so that she can steady herself better. GD seems delighted to have Esty back. Oh, she helped her up. 
Oh, bless her. Her friend's trying to help, uh, but she's kind of been a little bit forceful and shoving her out the way just now. It's all well and good removing that site of infection, but the key steps now is to get her balanced and to make sure that wound heals. A release site has been lined up for SD and GD. But first, Head of Animal Care Tori needs to see if the young diker has fully recovered from her amputation. Hey, Ella. Hello. How are they doing? Yeah, I think they're good. How's SD getting around? She's OK. I think she still needs to strengthen that front leg yeah. of hers, but she's managing to get around. I saw her trying to run yesterday, so that's a good awesome. sign. How's Gigi doing with SD obviously not being able to play as much as they used to? I think she understands. She does try and play with her every now and then, but SD will just either walk away or lie down. <laughs> so SD is not quite ready for release. We do have a fantastic release site lined up, though, and we don't want to miss this opportunity to use this site. So what we're going to do is take one of our other dikers. Her name is Sensa. She's an adult female, and she's been waiting for a little while for a release site. So this is a great opportunity for her, and we'll kind of, you know, move her up the list and send her out first. Sensa came through the illegal bushmeat trade, so she was found for sale on the side of the road, but she was destined for someone's dinner plate, uh, but was rescued and brought to the centre. Adult dikers can be skittish, and previous attempts to release her have failed. I think Sensa is going to probably give us a run for our money as we try and get her off the property. Release days usually mean an early start for the team. Woof! It's well before 8 o'clock here, and we're uh, getting everything ready to dart the diker and take it to be released. Vet Charlotte knows this isn't going to be straightforward. Dikers aren't particularly easy for anaesthesia. They're very prone to getting quite stressed under capture situations. And as such, they can start to run around um, and get really kind of worked up to the point that their muscles start to overheat. And that's what we'll be trying our very best to avoid today. And it's the reason we're all a little bit tense this morning. Tori has been keeping a close eye on Sensor's whereabouts. So last time we saw her, she was asleep directly behind the hut. Excellent. What I would do is not try to sneak up and surprise her, because she knows you're there. So yeah. if she's kind of hiding behind something, give her a wide berth, and then get to where you'll have a pretty much open view of her. So if she stands up, then you'll actually have a shot. Any questions? All right, let's go. Charlotte stands the best chance with her first dart, because Sensor is unaware of their plans. She's got it in one. 7.55. Now they need to wait for Sensor to calm down and go to sleep. Dart is in. What we're seeing now is just dikers being a prey species have a very strong flight response. So anytime something happens that they don't like, their immediate response is just to run. My concern now is that if she's running around too much, she's going to get stressed and overheated. So we're just going to give her a bit of space. It looks like the dart didn't fully discharge as it landed in skin rather than muscle and now it's fallen out. It's quite difficult when they are that close, especially in this enclosure. You don't know how close or how far you're going to get from them. Okay. Sensor's got wise to Charlotte, so Amanda decides to try her luck. When you're darting an animal, it's not something that's nice. The animals don't like it. It's something that is painful. I don't want to hurt animals, but that's part of the job, is to do that because there's a bigger picture, there's something that needs to be done, the animals will be better off for it. Amanda has a clear line of sight. But this time, the dart pistol misfires. The dart pistol isn't working in quite the way that we need it to. 
So we're going to pack it in for the day because unfortunately now sense is quite stressed out. If we keep pushing her, uh, we might push her too far. Sensor has evaded them yet again. After yesterday, Sensor is on high alert. She's a smart girl. Too smart. <laughs> I'm getting really tired of animals that are smarter than me. <laughs> to try to outsmart Sensor, Charlotte and Amanda are joining forces. So right now, Amanda and Charlotte are both going to attempt to dart. So if one has a better shot with the pistol, they'll take it. If the other one has a better shot with the blow dart from a different side, they'll take that too. So instead of just coming at her from one side, because she's been avoiding that person, now they'll come at it kind of both sides and hopefully increase our chances of getting that dart in today. Charlotte immediately sees her chance. But sensor is too quick. Everybody back off for just a minute. So she's moving. So if we have any chance, we're going to have to hit her on the move. She was too far. We just need to give her some time to relax. So we'll get back. We're going to make a couple more darts. We're going to have to hit her on the move. Amanda wants to give Sensor time to calm down. Tori, you look at your watch. Yep. And we're going to give this. 10 minutes. Amanda tries to hide behind Tori. Do you see her move? Yeah. Ugh. Sensa definitely remembers what happened yesterday. Um, she's going to recognize Charlotte. She's going to recognize the dart gun. Um, so we are kind of on the back foot a little bit this morning, but we have to keep going because we do need to get her out of here. This time, Sensor isn't quick enough. Got it. In. 9.54. Success. We're now just going to have to hope that she goes down well enough that we can get hands on and do everything we need to and, and get her boxed up and ready to go to a new home which is not going to be as easy as it sounds. So, do you want to go in there and try to grab her? I guess. Although she's calmer, Sensor is still awake. This is going to need teamwork. Mandy. She's fine. Sorry about that, Charlotte. Uh, you okay? Uh, Give me towels. Shut the door. Okay. And um, she is quite hot, which isn't too surprising given how much kind of running around and things she was doing. 39.4. Okay, so she's come down a bit. Yep. Great, great. Finally, it's time to go. Sensor's new life beckons. Enjoy your new life, Sensa. Send us a postcard. Come on, then, Bubs. 
Now that Sensor's gone, yeah. SD and GD get the run of Sensor's much bigger enclosure. And SD seems to be managing just fine on three legs. Look at SD. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> That's so good. Esty's actually trying to follow GD everywhere she's going. That's why she's running around so much. So hopefully GD will slow down a bit because otherwise Esty's going to get exhausted. With a little more rehabilitation, Esty and GD will soon be following Sensor into the wild. Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.